what's your motive? What's your intention? Why are you fixed on staying in unbelief? In a lot of my videos, um, just specifically about like, you know, for vision and God meeting your needs and God being there for you. And, you know, that's really kind of like been my focus because I see so many people um, that are in relationship with God, but just in fear. Um, and I'm reminded of a scripture in Deuteronomy chapter eight, basically, um, just to kind of summarize, it was the word of the Lord um, concerning the wilderness and why God brought them into the wilderness. And just talking about, you know, how God provided them with food that not even their fathers knew. And, you know, it was really a time where God got to show them their hearts and if they were going to follow the command or the assignment or the instruction that God gave them. But if I could just skim down to the bottom, God's real emphasis was do not forget the Lord your God and how he brought you out of the land of Egypt. Um, just essentially do not forget what God has done. Um, and I think that's so critical um, because what we find with the Israelites, what they did was they complained, they murmured, they doubted, they feared, but yet their resume was God showed up. God did it to the point where literally everybody around them knew, oh, now we know their God type thing. And I just think that it's like something we need to consider that if God has brought us through something, we need to keep that same energy when we're testifying about it versus when we're actually in the trial. And what I mean by that is, check this out, bro. In fear, we usually talk out of ignorance or because we're ignorant or we don't know something, we usually turn to fear. Um, and if we're talking about anything, it's just the fear of the unknown, right? That's usually the biggest fear, especially when it comes to God. But something that I found is in my life personally, I've talked from a place of ignorance. And when I walked through life and I experienced new things, I had to say, wait a minute. I know now what I said isn't necessarily true. And I spoke from a place of ignorance, especially when it comes to God as in, oh, I didn't know God could do that until I saw him do it. Or just even hearing about other people's testimonies. But let me just, let me just kind of summarize this video because it's really what I really want to focus on. If I say, yo, um, Conrad isn't really good with cameras and he's not a really good photographer or videographer, if that person doesn't know you or never seen you pick up a camera or never seen you shoot anything, you're like, like, all right, like, you don't really, you don't really know me like that, that's fine. Um, you've never seen that side of me. You've never experienced me with a camera in my hand. So you speaking out of ignorance and me being secure about who I am, that's all right. But if I come into the room and I've seen what you've done with cameras, I've seen you film, I've seen you record, I've seen you do this, I come in and say, oh, Conrad, he's not good with cameras. He's not a good photographer or videographer. It's gonna be a little offensive because I've seen your work. I've seen what you do. So someone who speaks out of ignorance about who you are or what you do, that's cool. But someone who knows you, who you are, and has seen that side of you, experienced what you've done and has seen your work, and then they testify falsely against you, or they act as if they don't know you, it's a problem now. Because you know me on that level. So your language about me should change. And I think that's the same thing with God, bro. It's like, if I've, I can't say God can't heal me once I've experienced God the healer. I cannot say God won't provide for me if I've experienced God the provider. You see what I'm saying? Now, a lot of people will say, oh, you're praying too big. I don't think God can do that because they're speaking from a place of ignorance. They have never seen that side of God before. Um, but being in a position where I can say I've experienced God the provider, I've seen God's hand, I've seen him move in ways that I can't explain, it becomes a thing of, oh, nah, I got to watch how I speak on his name because I've seen that side of him. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's like, I have no room to speak out of ignorance in the in experiences I have when it comes to God. And I think as believers, our job is to remember how God brought us out of the lands of Egypt. And if you've seen him do it before, he will do it again. Um, and that, and that, that's something that's really important to me. Um, I think that's so critical. You see what I'm saying? It's like, let's keep that same energy when we testify about God. If he did it before, he will be faithful to do it again. And he said, if you forget, you'll start to think you did it. You brought yourself to this place and it's not true. It's not true. You'll get arrogant and you'll start to hit the Bible says you, 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 you thought you did this out of your own strength, your own might, and you produce this, produce this wealth on your own. It's not the case.
God did it, and let's remember that, and let's be thankful. The will of God concerning all of us is to be thankful, so, yeah.